In the last video then, we got our Z-axis DRO scale all installed on the lathe and that was running the entirety of the bed and that went pretty smoothly. Well, in today's video, we're going to be getting the cross slide scale installed on the lathe and finishing up this little DRO install project. In the previous video then, we managed to install the Z-axis DRO that was running across the back of our bed with no real issues. There was nothing stopping that scale attaching to the side of the lathe, nothing that was sort of going to block it. Where with the top slide DRO, we have got a few issues. So in the ideal world, I'd like to fit this scale like this with the encoder facing down, giving the least amount of chance for any chips to get up here into sort of the glass area. But unfortunately, that's not going to be achievable because down here we've got our compound rest and we want no interference between this scale and this compound rest and with the DRO scale like that I wouldn't be able to swivel my top side or my compound rest as such without it interfering with the scale so because of that I'm going to have to mount this in sort of yay formation which means there is a chance a chip may get in here so Bear in mind, I'm going to have to just be monitoring that over sort of the lifetime that this DRO is fitted to this lathe. So, the first thing I think we need to do is find the location where we want this to mount, mark it all up, and then I can be taking the top slide off to take over to the mill. So, getting the location on my scale where I want it, I can now, using some shim blocks, just take this up off of the carriage just so we're not going to be laying it directly on top of that. We need a little bit of clearance there. So with these shims all installed, I can now clamp the scale to the cross slide so I can make the relevant markings. All right. Happy that that's not going anywhere. I can now basically mark out these holes and transfer them over to the top slide. To do so, I'm just going to use a permanent marker um, for any of you guys out there interested, since watching Adam Savage's video, I've started using these Pico ink markers and the nib of the pen. Uh, see if I can get that to focus. Yeah, basically, the nib of the pen is really fine but also long, so you can get it deep into holes like we'll be doing here. Hopefully, all being well, that would have transferred across. Yep, transferred across really nice. So, next thing I need to do now is take this top slide off and we'll head over to the mill where we'll be doing some machine work to get some threaded holes in there. We've got the top slide all separated now then and on the milling machine. And the issue we're going to have is because of where these holes need to be in relation to the top slide they're right in the sort of center of this V groove as you can see here so if I was to go straight in with a drill chances are that drill is going to seriously wander or more than likely snap because we're only going to be putting an M5 thread into this so to get over that issue what I'm going to do first is I'm going to locate visually on these holes and plunge down with an end mill to create a flat bottom. Once we've got a flat bottom in this V groove section, I can then come back in and hopefully do a normal drilling and tapping procedure to give myself an M5 thread in this sort of area.
From there, it was back over to the workbench to tap these holes out to accept an M5 bolt. So I was using a flat bottom spiral flute tap here just to be able to get to the thread to the deepest part of that hole. And with that hole done, I can just repeat the same again and do it on this end hole here. With that now bottomed out, that's both the holes done. Finding a couple of M5 bolts, we can just make, run them in there to make sure the fit feels good. And then from there, while we've got it in this position, I suppose we could test fit the scale as well. That's the first one in. And second one. Second one is in, beautiful. So with both those bolts loose, we've still got a slight bit of up and down movement where the holes are elongated in the DRO scale itself. But generally I'd say that's gonna be a pretty good fit. And where it's on a machined face there, we know it's gonna be perpendicular to the ways of the lathe. So that's brilliant. Right, next thing to do now really is to get the top slide assembled back on the lathe and we'll get the DRO scale mounted on here once again just to make sure all the fit between the DRO scale and the lathe isn't going to cause any major interference. Right then, I've got the top slide attached back onto the lathe and I've also mounted the scale onto the side of the top slide where we drilled and tapped those holes. And I can say we've got no interference between the compound and the glass scale. So that's brilliant. Next job we now need to do is we need to attach the encoder permanently to the carriage of the lathe. And to do so, I had a couple of ideas how I was going to do this. Maybe making up a personalised bracket for this situation. But I think actually the sort of extruded aluminium brackets that come with the kit, we might be able to do something with this. So currently as it sits, it doesn't actually fit in between the gap on the bed. So we need to get that addressed. But I think by shaving down the edges of this to make this fit and also adding a step on the back here just to match the step on the, on the carriage between the bottom part and the top slide, we'll be able to make this thing work. So I'm going to take some measurements, head back over to the mill and start machining this to get this bad boy to fit. So after taking some measurements off of the lathe, it turns out I need to take 2.5 mil top and bottom off of this extruded piece of aluminium. So to do so, I'm gonna use my two and a half inch face mill, just gonna lightly touch off, and then from there, go down in incremental passes until I hit two and a half mil. After that, we'll flip the part over, do it again, and then we'll go test fit it on the lathe. With the extruded aluminium, all machined now, we can just test fit this to make sure it's gonna fit in the ways of the lathe. And yeah, the gap on the bed, it all seems to fit the whole way down. So that's brilliant. Next thing we need to do now is we just need to machine a small step on the back here just because we've got a little bit overhang from the top slide. So I think I'm going to take the glass scale off once again now, get a fairly accurate measurement of that step and then we can take this back over to the mill and just machine this top section down Feeling it, it only feels about half a mil, maybe one millimetre at max. So it shouldn't be too much work over on the milling machine. After taking some measurements off the lathe then, this blacked out part of the back here that you see is what I need to take out. So it's 15 millimetres wide and one millimetre deep and just need to take all that out to account for the step from the top slide. So it should be a fairly easy procedure this. Doesn't need to be super accurate either, so I'm just gonna line this up by eye. I've got a 16 mil end mill in here, and just gonna line all this up and see how that goes. Being aluminium, this machine's really easy. No issues there. So 
So it's going to be quite hard to get you in here and have a good look at what we've achieved. But essentially, there's a small lip on the top slide here. And what we want is we want that sort of edge that we've machined there to locate on there. And I'm not too sure if we can use this as a point of reference, but the edge of the V groove on that top side is now level all the way down there. So what that means in theory is this is going to be perpendicular to the waves and parallel to the top slide, which should mean when we've attached the encoder to this, there shouldn't be any issues with misalignment. So from here, I need to mark out the holes where we need to drill into the carriage and then carefully drill and tap them to accept an M6 bolt. So with the bracket now in place, I can go back to fitting the glass scale to the top slide and using the same set of shims, I can just set the height that this sits off of the actual carriage. So happy that's all shimmed up, I can now do that up. Hopefully this should be the last time this thing gets removed from the top slide. And now taking the shims out, we can now try aligning the sensor to the bracket below. So with that in place, I can go find some bolts to fit into here and get this thing bolted down. So just like that guys, We've got ourselves a working DRO, finally, on the Harrison M300 lathe. So over the Christmas period, I think I'm going to have a play around with this DRO and use the tool function a lot more than I did on my previous DROs that I've got fitted on other machines. Because I think on this machine, having a tool function where you can change the offset depending on what tool you've got in the holder is going to work out really beneficial. So. That about sums up the DRO video. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Other than that, guys, I don't know what's going on over this Christmas period. I may get a chance to get into the workshop and create a couple of videos for you guys. But if I don't, sorry about that. I'm just enjoying some good old beer and some chill out time. So if I don't see you before, have a good Christmas. Have a good New Year. And I'll see you next year where we'll be back in the workshop smashing out videos. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching.